Hello and welcome back to CTR Part 12, and in this episode we will be continuing to go through the Gem Cups. We are in the Blue Gem Cup right now as we are at Sewer Speedway, which is one of my favorite courses in CTR, but I've already mentioned that multiple times. It's an awesome course. It is an awesome course. Um, I, well, during one of our many uh, recording recording breaks, I showed you the uh, the speedrun record for uh, for Sewer Speedway. Right? You sure did, and that guy was damn consistent. Yes, he was. Cause in and... Cause... Ah! <laughs> Damn it. I tried to block it with a nitro break and it didn't happen. It's so freaky when you can see the rocket. Ouch. Coco go flat. Yes. Alright, so... Since we're mostly doing repeats, anything specifically that you would like to discuss, Mr. Cloud? I, I didn't bring up the last time we did this that this level takes influence from the Eel Deal level from Crash Bandicoot 2. Yes, it does. It uses, it uses the sewer trope, the same trope that's used for the Eel Deal, sewer or later, and hanging it. I'm sorry, hanging out. Yeah. I do love those levels. I love the music they play in those levels. Unfortunately, they don't really, they don't really, re they don't really take much influence from Crash 2 in order to set the music for this stage. I noticed. Excellent. Yay! Time. It actually worked. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, a lot of the uh, C a lot of the CTR tracks are more are more or less from Crash 1 and 3 as opposed to Crash 2. <coughs> <laughs> There's a couple from. I mean, I'll, hmm. I mean, uh, you can tell uh, that one the tempo picks up on the the sewer speedway track specifically. It actually sounds significantly more tribal than it probably uh, wants to. Yeah, it's, it uses the it uses the xylophone. I noticed xylophone is very uh... xylophone is very prevalent throughout a lot of uh, CDR's tracks, though. Yeah. Oh no! I didn't want to hit my own nitro. Crate, Coco, so fall down. Fun. Coco, don't worry, we're still a full two seconds ahead. Coco, get back up and almost get crushed. Mm. So, um, I don't really have any dedicated topics <laughs> to bring up. I mean, I mean, sure, we just finished off Sewer Speedway again, but seriously, we, we still have one more uh, trip through Sewer Speedway to do. Ay. That's too far. Well, I was. Oh, damn it, Dragon Mines. Dragon Mines. Next. This level takes influence from. Being shit tier. Uh, it's, it's gonna hit me any second now. Nope, I can't think of any levels from the Crash games that this, le that this level resembles. Um, yeah, very specifically, it's the Koala Kong boss fight. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Of course, because that's a mine. <laughs> Minecarts, boulders, and pictures of Komodo Joe everywhere. Yeah, because uh, as, as everyone knows, Komodo Joe and Koala Kong are, you know, cousins from a from a distant relation. Komodo Joe spots for Koala Kong. Eh, uh, I actually think that it's, uh, I think it's, I forget the brother's name. Mo. Uh, Komodo Mo. Komodo okay. Mo, Komodo Joe. Seven. I think you got seven more reps in you. <laughs> the reptilian S thing. Uh, honestly, it only is ever uh, con uh, connected with me that well when it's uh, when it's actually a snake as opposed to a lizard. True. Yeah, because I mean, you never you never I, hear dragons do that do the S thing. Yeah. I mean, the very few times that you do hear it, it's, it, it it seems like it just doesn't fit with the character that well. I mean. Uh, most dragons, uh, most dragons that have it are trying to be super cunning, but they're usually idiots. I was gonna say, I wouldn't be surprised if the English word for snake uh, uses takes a phonetic cue from the hissing sound that they make. Well, the thing is, the hissing sound that they make is very specifically due to the rattlesnake's hiss, as opposed to you know uh, um, the basic snake hiss, because the tongue flick does not actually generate a hissing sound. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So what, what's new in the world of Gerda? Uh, not a lot. I mean, 
Uh, there's spoilers happening behind the scenes. Uh, World of Final Fantasy kicked my ass when I went up against Omega God, nice. mostly because I I'm doing a lot of the uh, a lot of the intervening boss uh, intervene boss fights without uh, much prep. I mean, I'm reading I'm reading the t the quest text, and that's how I was able to get Bismarck down. But yeah, Bismarck was actually cake compared to uh, most of the other ones. Thing is, World of Final Fantasy keeps doing this really stupid thing, where if when you when you Libra an enemy, they usually give you you know all, all the, the information that you need, like uh, weaknesses, uh, 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 ailment, uh, ailment resistances, and uh, HP totals, as well as if they're a normal enemy, how how to actually form the Prisma the Prismarian grid on them. But on several bosses, uh, specifically Bahamut, uh, Ultima Weapon and uh, Omega God, they don't give me the HP totals that I need. And it's like, why do you do that? That is not fair. I, I need those HP totals. I mean, the percent the percentage on target actually helps me quite a bit, but that's only in the classic menu. And sure, the classic menu is where I do all of my goddamn combat, but I should be able to, at a glance, tell what uh, what kind of HP they're on using the using the actual help screen, and they don't let me do that. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, I agree. Like, if I had if I had the option to to know what the enemy's HP was, except maybe in like a strategy guide, then yeah, I would I would love to know. For example, whenever yeah. I play Paper Mario, I always equip a badge that lets me see my opponent's health meter. Yeah, it's it's mo it's usually a wasted badge slot in Paper Mario, but it's such a good it's such a nice and convenient thing to have that you don't really mind losing that slot. Yeah, and well, it's not it's not only it not only gives you peace of mind, but it also makes it so that you don't have to waste a move tattling on the enemy just so you can get their health bar. Right. And then again, that assumes that you're actually uh, using uh, uh, it's Goombario, right? That's got tattle. Goombario and Paper Mario One has the has the tattle. Yep, and then and then Goombella in Paper Mario Two has the tattle. Okay. In other words, both of your starters have the have the tattle ability. <laughs> yeah, which is very important. Not so much for the early game, but later on, uh, having having tattle or as it's known in uh, Final Fantasy Libra is very very important. There, at, mm. at least if you're if you're going in without if you're going in without much uh, support. Actually, there's a there's a particular enemy encounter in Paper Mario 2 where I think you have to tattle in order to proceed with the fight because you're supposed to learn that the enemy you're fighting has infinite defense, which means that you can't inflict damage on them. However, there's no way you could know that unless the tattle tells you specifically you can't fucking damage them. <laughs> Right. Uh, for that point, I believe you're actually forced to have Goombario, though, right? Or Goombella? Um, no, no, you're not. You're not forced to have him. Oh. I mean, I I would assume that the player would get a little curious because the attacks keep landing, but they keep dealing no damage no matter what you do. So you figure, what, what what's going on here? What, what's what's the what's the issue? What's the major malfunction? Congratulations. You want a gem. We got the blue gem. We got the blue gem. Now there are only two. So next left. is the yellow gem. Yellow gem. Uh, so Tiny Arena, uh, Dingo Canyon, Hiss Island, Oxide Station, Yellow Snow. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure what uh, track three is. Oh, stay a while with Dingo. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't do Australian at like at all. You can put. You can put a little Bobby on it. No, man. I can't do that. Like the closest I get is honestly like reggae stoner. That's <laughs> that's the closest <laughs> I can get. Uh, what a distinct identity. <laughs> Uh, it's not that distinct. I mean, come on. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same stereotype that we've had about that that, part, that particular class of stoner since Bob Marley, you know, first released. Uh, what was it? His second album. Buffalo Soldier, coming to America. No. Hey, we blew up on uh, uh, like, uh, Cortex. That's his name. <laughs> You hit him at the exact moment he thought he was going to win. <laughs> oh, that yeah. Is... Co comedic voice interaction is a very important part of this game. 
I, it always struck me as odd how clean the voices sound in this game. Maybe it's just that I wasn't used to having voice acting in my games at this point. But, uh... Oh, boy. I always thought compared to the music and compared to the sound effects, it's like, it's like they had put more shit on the sound effects in the music, but less shit on the voice acting, so it sounds a lot clearer. Um... I'm not a, I'm not a big enough audio file to really know, uh, notice it that much. I will say that I think a major uh, a major uh, contributor to that is the amount of instrumentation on the music. But again, I'm an idiot, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Right, Coco. Get your nine points. Yes. So is next tiny arena? I'm pretty sure next is tiny arena. Well, they do it. Yep, tiny, tiny arena. Call it. So, the last two are Hot Air Skyway and Oxide Station. I remembered it, finally. So, while we have... So, so while we're still only going over tracks that we've done before, let me say that after many months of only playing Zombies in Bloodborne, I finally got back to Near Automata. Ooh! Uh, and I fucking I, love this game. I didn't game. even know that you had started that. I fucking love this game so far. <laughs> well... Um, it has a lot of really awesome set pieces, and um, uh, that's uh, honestly all that I all that I really know about it is just how awesome the set pieces are. But that's to be expected. After all, it's platinum, and platinum makes awesome set piece games. Uh, but you do you do know you do know who the who the main protagonist is, right? Two B. Yep, B. Yep. Um, follow, followed by her her trusty sidekick 9S, who at the beginning of the game almost dies and needs 2B's help in order to survive. Although, actually, I don't think there was any real peril in the first place, because you can just... They are androids. They're androids, and you can download their memories onto a new body. I, I, uh, I think that's how it works. Um, but yeah, the, I had I had been sit I, I had to check the timestamp on the last time I saved. The last time I played this fucking game was, was ten months ago. Like, what the hell? Wow. That means you got it pretty much what just after release, didn't you? Uh, kind of. I had to. I had to wait for that bargain sale. Uh. My but my buddy my buddy to helped me helped me get that because I think I was like two hours before the time constraint. Okay. Um. So what? Uh, so what drew drew you true true near Tomatron? Did you actually see your buddy your buddy's playing it and you're like, damn, this looks awesome? I never watched him play it, but um. He highly, very highly recommended it, both because it's a third-person game, and he knew that I adored Bloodborne very much. He knew that I was going to enjoy this, and that it's it's a cha it's a challenge. It's a it's a bullet hell. It you don't have invincibility frames. You have to you have to play really strategic, and the controls are so tight, so fast, and the whole game is so accessible. It's like I I barely even gotten started. Now, neither you or your buddy have a Nintendo Switch yet, right? Nope, nope. Uh, I'm, pr I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure my buddy doesn't have a Nintendo Switch. Well, Bayonetta 2 is coming out for the Nintendo Switch at some point. And if, you're, and if you really like a Nier Automata for, uh, for how tight its control is and the set pieces, I'd recommend that you and your buddy try that out. I personally really like Bayonetta 2 significantly more than Bayonetta 1, but... Um, I will say that the story is honestly a pretty weak spot, although I still enjoy it. Isn't, um, isn't Bayonetta 2 closer to Devil May Cry, though? Um, given that that's exactly what Nier Automata wants to be, yes, it is. <laughs> no, 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 that, that's, I don't, I don't think that's a fair comparison. It's close, it's close. It's a third-person game. Um, there's a lot of like standing around and doing like six hit combos while the, everybody's standing perfectly still. There's a, there's a lot of that stuff. What I've also noticed about Nier Automata is that there's a, there's a lot of um, variability in the gameplay. Like the camera will be fixed sometimes, so you're only looking overhead. There are, um, there are uh, fighter pilot sec uh, segments. There are segments where you're going to be either focusing only on melee or only on your projectile attacks. Not to mention that you could shoot and swing your sword at the same time. Mm, uh, well, you can't do that. The, that last one did when I cry. Uh, everything else, uh, everything else is there in Bayonetta. Well, Bayonetta 2 at least. 
Yep, not to mention a an attractive female lead that we can that helps us in that helps ensconce us in the game. <laughs>